It's New Day. I just finished measuring that really tight rear spacing on the 4130 core line. The standard for rear spacing is 120 millimeters. This bike has 115 millimeter rear spacing. That's half a centimeter smaller than it should be. Of course, this frame set isn't the most expensive thing in the world, but it retails for $190. And at $190, it should at least meet the standards that all fixed gears and single speeds are held to so that I can put in and take out my rear wheel pretty easily. And to me, it feels a lot cheaper than what they ask for. My two cents on the rear spacing, I think it's unacceptable. I am yanking on this thing super hard right now. I am not exaggerating at all with this rear wheel and trying to get it out. I will even take the nuts completely off to show you that I'm not exaggerating. It's not budging at all. This is a pretty unacceptable. I say you're not supposed to force anything on a bike. If you are, you're probably doing something wrong. This is an exception to that rule. These things are measured in millimeters for a reason. This is a new bike. I shouldn't be having to deal with this, especially if you're a customer and you pay $450 for this. It's not acceptable. Thank God. Good news, everyone. I can finally tighten the cog and lock ring and we can actually ride this bike. Before I tighten this cog and while we have it off, I'm going to take it off first and see if it's even greased in the first place because you can never be too thorough with these things, especially when the rear dropouts aren't spaced at 120 millimeters. I'm not even sure if that needed a lock room tool. Ooh, yep, that is not greased at all. That is metal on metal right there. I'm not trying to hate on state. I am showing you facts and it just, turns out that it's not a good experience for me. And just as I feared, the cog and lock ring are on the hub without any grease. To be fair, I did not read the manual. Maybe it says to take off the cog and lock ring and to grease them. I know it's in here somewhere. Here we go. Here's the manual. Confirm that wheel reflectors are fitted. Nah, unsure. Contact a mechanic, good advice. Handy chart for troubleshooting. There's, there's some useful advice. Nothing about the hub threads so far. Check hubs are correctly lubricated. All right, apparently I can't complain too much. It is technically in here. It's pretty vague and it just says, check that the hubs are lubricated. That could be referring to hub bearings. That could be referring to axle threads. It could also potentially refer to the rear hub threads for the cog. It does not specifically say, but the argument can be made that it is in there, even if it's not intended. Back into the trash, this goes. Of course, I will measure this when I get the chance, but just eyeballing it, it looks like it's about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters too small for the rear spacing. So it should be fun trying to get this in. Ooh. Oh, that is wrong. Please, please. This is wrong. It shouldn't be like that. Now for the million dollar question. We know that this bike looks good, but how does it ride? Now this is only my second ride with it, so these are just my first impressions. I have about 45 miles on it. For my first impression of the ride quality of this bike, fine. It's, it's fine. So far, I haven't really been able to tell how this bike's ride quality is different from bikes at the same price point. I've ridden a lot of these $450 bikes, and to be honest, a lot of them ride 
almost exactly the same. Now I must say with the 4130 Coraline that the steering was actually a lot more responsive and a lot twitchier than I was expecting from a bike at this price. It is very responsive to steering in the handlebars and you don't really have to lean into corners as much. And because of that, I feel like I can ride this bike pretty aggressively and take turns a lot more sharply. So that is something that is quite fun about this. And so far I have not experienced any problems with pedal strike. Now I expect this bike with the low pro box section wheels, a lot of other states come with those deep 43-ish millimeter wheels, which will be a lot heavier and they will probably feel a lot more sluggish. And with that said, with these box section wheels, overall I think the ride quality is pretty average. The wheels are fine, they corner fine, the bike is responsive enough, and this state suffers from the same problems from bikes at this price. The pedals this bike comes with suck, and I even upgraded to get some foot retention. Honestly, they suck. There's no tabs on the pedal, so it's really difficult to get your foot inside. With this, I was struggling, and I felt like I was learning again for the first time. Another thing that a lot of bikes at this price suffer from, the saddle sucks. That's just usually the way it is. And on paper, it sounds like the state has a leg up above the competition because it comes with 144 BCD crank set, whereas most other bikes at this price only have a 130 BCD crank set. There are different qualities of 144 BCD crank set and this is the lowest quality that I've seen. Just because it's 144 BCD doesn't mean it's good. It rides only slightly better than the stock crank sets found on other bikes that are 130 BCD at this price point. When you sprint on these cranks and maybe it has to do with the frame set as well, it just feels mushy. It feels like that the bike is fighting against you when you're trying to go fast and it doesn't feel very responsive to sprinting. With all of this said, for a beginner, all of these things a beginner probably wouldn't notice. If this is your first fixed gear, you probably aren't going to notice what I call a mushy crank set. You probably aren't going to notice a mushy bottom bracket. And for a beginner at this price, it looks great and that's fine. A problem that I've had with this bike that I haven't had with this bike's competition is sizing. For some reason, it goes from 55 to 59 centimeters. And I'm a 57 to 58, and I'm just thinking, State, where's my size? Why is there no 57 centimeter size? It's really weird to me because they have two centimeter increments for their other bikes. But for some reason, for the core line, the steel version, there's just no 57 centimeter. And because of that, I feel like I'm really stretched out on this 59 centimeter. And if I went down to a 55, that would have just been way too small. Where's the 57? Of course, as I ride this bike more, my opinion may change. New things might come up. I might become more accustomed to the bike and I might end up liking it more or liking it less. We'll have to see for the full review. Before we put this bike on hold, if you watched the previous vlog to this one where I built it up, I've had a lot of issues. If you haven't seen it yet, I suggest that you go and watch it now. I contacted State and they responded and they worked to set things straight or at least explain things. So let's see what they said. So I told State about all the issues that I had and they got back to me. The first issue I had was with the boxes that the bikes came in. There was no fragile labels, no this way up arrows, and no do not lay flat on its side. And because of that, I think that they were handled less than carefully during shipping and my bike ended up getting damaged as a result. Basically State said that this is their new box, the one with the faces and the stories of people riding. They did this because they thought that their old boxes were pretty plain, although their old boxes did include all the fragile labels and the instructions for how to handle the bikes. And aesthetically, the new boxes are nicer. Their reasoning was that when things look nicer, generally they're handled better. But they did admit that there can never be too many warnings on a bike to ensure that a customer gets their bike safe and sound. And they said that they are working to improve this. I also had issues with the inside of the box, that is to say, the packaging. I thought that there could have been more bubble wrap to protect the tubes of the bike and that the packaging that was there wasn't secured well enough. Because of that, I got scratches on the non-drive side crank arm and a small dent in the down tube. 
states that they've had a few customers have dents in their top tubes earlier this year. And since then, they've created a solution at the production level to eliminate this problem. They also said that the shipping team in Arizona is going through every single box that they already have to ensure that they're packed up to standard. And because of this efforts, they said that they've seen less than one occurrence per month in the last five months and that they expect these problems to drop off entirely in the coming months. And this isn't just something that they're saying. State actually showed me some drawings of exactly what they're doing with their boxes and their packaging. Unfortunately, those drawings are confidential and I can't show you. I also had a problem with my core lines paint. There were some bubbles and imperfections and in the dropouts and under the fork, you could see a blue tint to the paint. It was originally blue and they just sprayed on top of it. State said this is a rare occurrence and it would always result in a warranty for the customer. Probably the most frustrating thing for me was that my core line rear spacing was 115 millimeters, not 120 millimeters that fixed gears and single speeds are usually supposed to be. State responded, all of our core lines are spaced at 120 millimeters in the rear dropouts. If there's any variance, it must be due to an issue with transport. This answer seems kind of like a cop-out. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me because as far as I know, State ships a lot of these core lines as completes. And if they're completes, the rear wheels that is spaced at 120 millimeters in the dropouts would be holding the dropouts. And if there's any issue with transport, it wouldn't be able to squeeze down from 120 millimeters to 115 millimeters. Instead, I think that this is an issue with production. The frame set that I got just happens to be one that fell through the quality control system. The last issue I had was with the Black Label version 2. I didn't get this on camera, but I inspected the fork and the compression plug to see if everything was installed correctly. In short, it wasn't. The top cap was completely rounded out and the compression plug was way over torqued and not greased at all. And again, State said that this is a very uncommon occurrence. They combed through all of their customer service tickets and warranties, and they said that they did not find any occurrence of this issue. And to close things off, State says that at the end of the day, if a customer were to present these issues to us, we would 100% work with them quickly to resolve the issue through replacement parts or replacing the box. Let me know if you wish to receive a different bike, need replacement parts, or want to continue with a review. From my perspective, State has kept their word. They've been very responsive in getting me replacement parts. I asked for a new core line frame set, a new full carbon fork for the Black Label version 2, along with the compression plug and the threaded top cap. The same day I asked for them, they shipped it out, no questions asked. It is a little unfortunate that I had to go through this process in the first place. Sometimes these things do happen and I'll give State the benefit of the doubt, but State was very responsive and they are doing everything that they can to make things right. My concern though is that I don't know if a regular customer will get the same kind of treatment that I'm getting because I have a direct line to the upper management. And part of me thinks that, that a regular customer would have to talk to a lot of people, representatives, customer service. I don't know how responsive they are to normal customers. But for me, it seems like they're doing everything that they can. If you have experience with state, and their customer service, please do let me know in the comments below what your experience has been and if they're giving me any special treatment. So very shortly, the bikes will be in proper order. I'll be able to ride them and everything will be PG keen and we'll be able to get on with the review. So I can tell you whether these state bikes are worth your hard earned money. And Fixie Famous shout outs to Mikey Sincox, Otzi Verto, Connor Kerrigan, Albert Wu, Marek Javecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick Hound, Dorella Zero One, Evil Ernie, Mark Vanzaventer, and Jazeel for making these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. If you haven't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now and go out and ride your bike because life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.